Hi guys, welcome to my channel, me again Chrissy. Um, I'm doing some geraniums in a pot today, just sat on a windowsill. I thought this was a nice little project to do, so I hope you enjoy this guys. If you do, give us a thumbs up, I appreciate that. I've just torn the back of it with some grey and some phthalo green and dried it off. Got me and me John and I'm just using some ultramarine, uh, French ultramarine blue and a tiny bit of dioxin purple and white. So I'm adding the white on the outsides and I'm just keeping it dark in the centre of the frame. As you can see, my brush is loaded with the blue and the purple. There's just a tiny little bit of white just to lighten it in sections. I thought this was nice to do. It's a nice loose painting today. There's not much detail in this, so I hope you enjoy it. I thoroughly enjoyed painting it. I was just using my ruler there just to get a straighter edge. It just makes it a bit faster as well. I'm using the purple there again just to get them dark corners in. And then sticking with the French Ultramarine Blue and just lightening it as I go. I've just added some dioxin purple and some white, still with my dirty brush, just to give the loose impression of some wood grain on the windowsill. Now I'm filling in the base of my terracotta pot. So I'm just using some cadmium red deep with some sienna. And I'm darkening it on one side because I want it, the light source coming from one direction. So I've just added a bit more burnt umber and some quinacro and magenta. And then here now I've just got a bit of yellow with quinacro and magenta. Makes a really cool colour. I'm just using my little angle brush as well. Going a bit darker in there because it's really dark shadows and so we've got some contrast uh, when we put the leaves of the plant in. So I've let that pot dry and I'll just put a few rough lines in just to give the pot a shape. Same colour again that I've used on the window. I'm just adding a bit more white as I go just to give that like a streaky window effect on the glass. Like I say, it's a nice loose painting today. I'm just using a soft filbert and I'm just roughly putting my strokes in. I'm not doing too much blending out. I'm making sure it's darker where I want the darker values. Like I said, because we want the leaves to uh, show up later on. So then I'm going a bit more violet colour. So I'm going between the violet and the French ultramarine blue and uh, adding white as I go for the lighter areas. I hope you enjoy it guys. If you do, give us a thumbs up. I appreciate that as always. You can always leave me a comment if you want to ask me something. I'll always get back to you. And also you can join my Facebook group if you enjoy art. We do loads in the Facebook group. Link for that's in the description box below. We do all sorts of paintings, crafting, card making, modelling, crocheting, wet felting, all sorts. It's a really uh, creative group. It's wonderful. And we're all nice and friendly and helpful. So we, I'm just using the purple. I'm just going really, really light with some white. And I'm just adding some toning grey pinkish colour just to get this nice pinkish colour. But you can mix that by using the uh, purple as well. But I just use a bit of quinacridone or magenta. Like I say it doesn't have to be a perfect colour. just wanted a lighter value on the uh, actual windowsill. Just doing a dark lip there under the actual stone that it's sat on, just to give a nice shadow, but keeping the brush strokes fairly loose still. I'm not over blending anything. I want that nice loose impressionistic look. I'm just building up the stonework now on the actual wall with just that light colour tinted with some yellow or quinacridone on gold. And then the other side, I've just got it tinted with some uh, quinacridone magenta. 
same here going up the side. So I've still got all these colours on my brush, so it's quite a dirty brush, but it all gives the effect of the actual wall, which is pretty cool. To try and get all them colours uh, mixing in nicely together. Same again there, I've got some buff titanium and some uh, Quiracodon magenta. And in the centre there, I've just gone back to using that French ultramarine blue as well. Now this bit's dry at the bottom, I've come back to now. So I can give that another layer and just lighten some sections up with my buff titanium and some titanium white mix. So I don't want it too light yet till we get further on to add me final highlights. Like you say, we're in an acrylic, so we're working up in layers. Now the wall's dry, so this is why I'm going in with another layer. I've let it all dry. Same on the window. I'm just scrumbling in dry brushing here, some light streaks just coming over the window, just to give it that effect that there's a bit of light just peering down and hitting onto the glass. Like I said, very loose, very loose strokes. I'm filling my leaves in. I'm using some phthalo green and some sap green here. And I've got the dark on the one side of the brush and the lighter colour on the other side of the brush. So what I'm doing is filling the leaves in and flipping my brush over to get it all mixed in together. And I repeat this, fill all the foliage in. I'm doing these a bit lighter here, so I'm going a bit more sap green there. And a tiny bit of yellow, so I don't want it too bright yet. I'm just darkening that window again, because I, I missed a bit, <laughs> filling in the gaps. I'm going in with some cadmium orange here just to lighten my pot up slightly. It's a nice thin glaze, so I'm using some glazing medium just to get that nice smooth transition of the terracotta pot. And I've got a bit of red in there as well, a bit of uh, cad red medium. I still want that terracotta look, I don't want it too bright yet. Same mixture again, I've gone with the Quinacridone Magenta this time and yellow. Put my mid-tones on. Still with small filbert brush, nice soft loose brush strokes. I wanted a bit of a glow underneath that pot, so I've just had some Quinacridone Magenta and some Cadmium Orange a nice thin glaze then I go back over and just darken it slightly but you can still see the layer underneath So I'm, I'm using a dry brush now and I'm just scrumbling on some yellow. I'm just going back in, making sure I've got my values correct. So I'm keeping them dark lines underneath the rim of the pot. I'm just reshaping it there because I think it just went a bit wonky on me, which sometimes it does. Now I've got my palette knife out, a painter's knife as some people call it. And I'm just going on with some titanium white here. And I've just toned it ever so slightly with some grey, so it's not too bright. So I wanted to give some texture actually onto the stone wall. 
some visual texture and some uh, texture you feel when the paintings dry also. Now I'm blocking in my actual geraniums. I'm using some cad red medium and some cad red deep with a tiny bit of burgundy just to get the darker shadows in. As I said before, I've got the lighter colour on one side of the brush and the darker colour on the other side. I'm just twisting my brush to get that loose layer down of the paint. And now I'm doing to use some phthalo blue just to brighten up this windowsill a little bit. And a tiny bit of white, but still a thin layer. I'm just straightening up any of the uh, lines that I wanted to level out a bit more. Or highlight, should I say, to show up a bit more. Back to my flowers, so they've dried, so I'm going in with the cad red medium and I've got some vermilion on the standby as well, but I'm just using cad red medium at the moment. Like I said, just nice loose strokes because geraniums a funny shaped flower, aren't they? They're not really a flower to do detail. So I thought this would be a great painting to do loose to show off the actual flowers this, themselves. I'm keeping the centres dark, so I'm aware of that, so I just keep going back in. Now I've moved on to the leaves, so I'm lightening them leaves. I'm just using some lime, lime green here, and I've just toned it a little bit with some sap green. And as you can see, I'm loosely applying the paint, because like I say, it's a nice loose feel to this painting. I don't want to go over detailed. So I want to give the impression that these are the actual leaves of the plant without putting too much detail. So I've gone in with some yellow ochre there just to make it give it a bit more earthy tone on some of them leaves, which they do have with geraniums. They can be a bit more like a brownie uh, stained colour, can't they? Not on all of them, just some. Now I'm going in with a vermilion, or you can use any red you like, but I think this is a really nice bright red. And it's quite nice and effective, and it looks really cool next to the green, obviously because red and green are opposites on the colour wheel, so they sit nice together. A few more highlights. So I've just gone lighter now with the uh, yellow and the green. But I'm not doing them all, I'm just doing certain leaves. Make sure you don't use your, lose your dark values, so go back in and, and put them back in if you do. And the final layer, and here I've just added a tiny bit of cadmium orange just to punch up that vermilion a little bit. It gives that extra glow. I'm reshaping this one because I didn't like the shape it was coming out. Because they're like little clusters, aren't they? And it was just like one big flower. I've changed it. <laughs> I'm using that mixture on my pot because I thought that would be cool. Just a nice thin glaze, make it just shiny a little bit more. Then a really thin layer with quinacridone magenta and purple on top of this windowsill. I wanted to add a bit more colour into it. And there you go. So thanks guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please give us a thumbs up if you did. I'd appreciate that. On screen now are two videos you may like to watch and if you're not already subscribed, click on my face and be sure to click the icon bell to get a notification. As always, thanks for watching and create something wonderful. See you all soon on my next video.